Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 106. I'm Mike Sorg here in our studios here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, with me on the couch, as usual, is Chachi of InsertCoin to Begin.com. How you doing tonight, sir? That's a finger point for you guys on oh, audio. Wait. Oh, there it is. I was waiting to sync up with the chat room. Okay. <laughs> I am on the chat. I'm doing well. Thank You're doing you well? for You're doing asking. Good. You're yes. doing good. Everything finally slowed down. Yeah. Um, E3 is over. It was a tough couple of weeks. Microsoft didn't announce anything worthwhile at their thing. Not for you, at least. Yeah. So. Definitely. definitely. So, so right. things, and, and, are, things are slowing. That's good. That's good. Well, that's I mean, good. as slow as they normally Everything's going with the are. site. You have a new podcast with Let's Play. Yep. So go check that out. Which is over. following immediately following this one if you're listening or watching live. Excellent, excellent. Um, I don't know why I act as if I'm surprised at that. I know. Um, you know. Uh, and also join us is Brian Snyder, Dab of Tech. Uh, let's see if I remember. Hello. I have the right Twitter on there for you. It's a CH you want to tell people about, right? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, pick one. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. How you doing? I'm doing well, and yourself? Good, good. I understand you are a recent uh, lever of the cord-cutting ways. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, uh, I, I, if I re- remember correctly, you taped that cord back together. Yeah, we're, we're working on it. So, essentially, how should I say it? It's come to uh, a situation where we're probably going to be watching a little bit more TV. And that's exactly how this started. Okay. So, <laughs> so, we started to look at it. And what actually inspired me to even look in it was the new Fios data plans. So earlier this month, I started uh, looking into the Fios data plans because they announced, I don't know, about 30 days ago or so that they were going to have updated speeds. And what mm-hmm. caught my eye, the 75, was it 75, 35 plans. So 75 down, 35 up. Um, so I waited and waited. Like every probably week, I was chatting with somebody from Verizon. I'm like, oh, when is this coming out? And first, of course, they were clueless and had no idea what I was talking about. Two weeks, they they were able to give me a date. And they said, uh, on the 18th, you should be able to, uh, you know, see the plans online and, you know, to, to try to order them. So uh, luckily for us, and it actually to go from a whatever their normal one is, to go to 75 down, 35 up is only uh, an extra $15 a month. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what do you have? Like like maybe like the 10 plan or something? I have the Comcast plan. Uh, it's just the performance plan we've had now. When we started on this plan, it was uh, three down, like 768 up, and keep increasing the speed, which is actually awesome. And I can tell you that our neighborhood fire. Oh, you're cutting out a little bit there. What's that? You're cutting out a little bit there. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry. Uh, that's that's because I'm uh, beating up on Comcast. They're cutting out my bits. <laughs> they're they're throttling you, sir. Oh, uh, but uh, no. So yeah, you know, it's just one of those things where uh, you know we started looking into it, and uh, definitely the extra speeds for the minimal money was uh, definitely something that you know, was interesting to me. So um, I tried to stay with Comcast today. I called them, spoke with a very nice, clueless gentleman from Comcast, and it wasn't a very good conversation. So <laughs> so it was just uh, from there, it just went, yeah, we're definitely doing Fios. So yeah, after our conversation today to get the equivalent of what I'll get for Fios, uh, the Fios will probably run us around 110 a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, to get the equivalent uh, from Comcast, I believe is around $300 a month. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. That's significant. Um, that's a pretty good deal from, from a, a, a service that they've stopped rolling out. <laughs> But uh, that's awesome. Um, so 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 welcome to it. Welcome to it. And, and, and in, in, in related news, I finally got that Roku box he sent me uh, working. Welcome back to the cord, brother. Yeah, exactly. Chachi's, nice. Chachi's living life on the cord. Um, yeah, you know, I actually, you know, Fios again, I had, I had had a day where uh, I had called them to because I was having my box. I don't know if you can hear it in the background beeps every once in a while because uh, the battery was going on yet again. Uh, great. 
call with Fios. Uh, they, they, he was about to send me another battery. The second they've sent me in like, I don't know, four years that I've had them, uh, which means there's something wrong with that box or something. Um, and then he's like, you know, you don't actually know that need this because you just have internet. That's actually a backup for the phone line. Uh, so he didn't even bother with that. Unfortunately, I don't know how to turn the thing off. Um, but no, the, then, then they, then I called back again. Cause I'm like, Hey, I can't get this Roku box. It's been sitting here for like six months. I don't even know if you guys would help me. And she did. And I actually started looking at my rotor. It turned out it needed hard reset. Cause it was, it was completely messed up. Um, I've had problems with the Wii getting put on it. Um, so that's one of the couple of reasons I haven't been playing Wii lately. So, um, and the Roku box just would not connect to it it would say it found the network couldn't find the internet uh and it fixed it straight up fixed it so now i'm i've been enjoying that i'm I'm looking to write up a review comparing uh that to the xbox 360 please tell me those things get faster with the newer ones the roke yeah the roku box yeah i mean what what part of it gets faster like going in between like the different (laughs) channels or yeah responsiveness mostly it it definitely it takes a while to load up uh, yeah but once you get going, you start watching it. It's it's, it's really indistingu- indistinguishable from my Xbox. I think um, we it, like I was always used to it, and the only challenge that I had with the Roku is I maxed out channels. There's actually a maximum number of channels you can put on on that of the Roku box. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is a shame. Which is a shame. Now you guys up- upgraded. That's why I got one passed my way, right? That is correct. We uh, uh, they had a special for Roku owners one time, and I couldn't pass it up. And one showed up at the house, which is uh, really nice. Uh, it, it's it had angry. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it's a little bit smaller. That the box that you actually have was the one of the first has like all of the different connections and different mm-hmm. things, which obviously they found out later on probably wasn't necessary yeah yeah i, I looked at the start looking up and, and started looking at that and I, I was I'm, i was looking at uh the idea of writing a review of comparing it again to the xbox and then i was like oh that's not fair this is a first generation one then i look at i got my xbox in 2007 so it's actually older than this and the compare compa- uh, capabilities i think is kind of an accurate thing still um so but you know keeping that in mind i I think i still got pretty much a good idea of the experience because i think we're still it's still pretty much on par i don't think they've limited features other than i can't play angry birds but i tell you what i hop in that channel shop and he's wanting to sell me a roku box and an angry birds plushie i might have to jump on that one of these times um so so you know um so adventures in core cutting um yeah i was gonna say on the roku box for anybody who you know watches sports so many channels for people who mm-hmm. don't have cable but mm-hmm. you know want to enjoy certain types of sports which is actually really nice yeah and i'm I've actually but, been looking at it. of course xbox announced uh nba nhl i'm interested in nhl if i was keep winning i'm really thinking i want to stick to my uh i might get ml mlb tv and try to catch some more games you know if that works out so uh so we'll see and nice to have two things that i can watch it on there um, and you can lose entire weekends finding new uh, independent shows on different, you know, different places. And like some, uh, like a lot of people apparently find this show. And it's also nice because I get to see uh, how like, I mean, you guys say you watch the show on your Roku box. And 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 now I get to see like cause still I have a look at the numbers just last week. Still half of the people watching this show are on Roku boxes. And I get to see what that experience is like. And I get to see how that video looks. And my God, I'm going to figure out how to improve this. So it looks better on your way. It gets stretched out to a widescreen TV like that, you know. Um, so, so we'll be working on that, and they'll they'll definitely uh, kick my butt to do a little bit more there. So, well, let's see. Rob Daler Creative should be joining us shortly. He said he'd be about ten minutes late, so we're going to keep an eye out on that. Uh, but with that, um, I think we can go ahead and start talking about the biggest story of the week here. Of course, there was a big mystery announcement yesterday. Uh, with Microsoft, which is really kind of unbecoming of Microsoft. They, they really don't do something like this. It was a complete mystery. I don't even think the venue was revealed until the day of the event. Because, like, the invites didn't have a venue. They just said, it's in L.A. Which, you know, narrows it down a whole lot, right? Um, but it, 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 it was unveiled yesterday. It was uh, Microsoft Surface is going to be the Microsoft built and branded tablet um they're they're just gonna do it themselves i guess uh 
two flavors. You're gonna have your regular uh, Windows RT one on uh, on uh, what do you we call it? Uh, Atom processors, is it? Atom. Yes. Yeah. And uh, there's and then I guess a, a few uh, weeks later they're gonna release a Windows tablet or Windows Service Pro uh, that will be an Intel based one, um, and you know be able to have the full functionality of your desktop, of course. Uh, for those who don't know, on the Atom, the RT version of Windows 8, everything has to be Metro. The, I think the only apps that can go to your desktop is Office. That is uh, going to be built in. Um, so, and we got the picture here. You see it's got a smart cover uh, that doubles as a Bluetooth keyboard, which is kind of a cool thing. It's got a built-in kickstand. Um, it's got some really interesting design to it shockingly uh and they love the dubstep on the commercial by the way whoa, so whoa, whoa, yes they whoa, did whoa, yes they didn't even my <laughs> blog whoa, 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 when we went into this um i don't know what do you what do you guys think of this so far um it, it, is this gonna be an ipad killer it's an arm processor not adam arm processor i'm yep. i'm sorry no price. That's right. Adams intel intel's is no it? price no release date equals not interested from fuzz what about you, Brian? Yeah, it's going to be tough. I think they, unfortunately, how should I say it's like they didn't really define the market. So, you know, when you look at the, the Surface Pro, we don't even know what the price is going to be. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when I look at that, you know, I say to myself, OK, well, why don't I just get an Ultrabook or, you know, you know something to, equivalent to that? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and, well, let's say, and, and, and they did say it was going to be, I think the lower version is going to be compared to a Ultrabook, which is like the $800 range. So this right. isn't even going to be in the range of what you would just pick up an iPad for at four or $500. And that's going to get cheaper by the time we get to this time next year, I'm sure, uh, as they release the new versions and everything. Um, I don't know. I give them a lot of credit for design, though. Um, then they started pulling out a pen, which magnetizes to the side. And I think, well, there's all the problems he had before. So, uh, hey, we got Frank Fuzzwad from over on Instagram hey. going to begin is in the Hangout. Let's see what he thinks of this. You there, buddy? Yeah, I'm here. All right. What do you think of Surface? Have you been following this Microsoft thing? I know you corrected me in the chat room already. Um, yeah, it it looks interesting, kind of. Mm-hmm. But there is no release date and there's no price. A lot of the rumors are saying that it's going to be between eight hundred and a thousand dollars, which I'm not going to drop that on a Windows device. And I don't know. It has some neat little things. I really like the uh, keyboard that's built into the case. But I don't know. It's it's just the thing that's there. It exists. That's about it for me. It seems to solve some of the tablet problems, or at least attempts to, uh, yeah. with this. Um, I mean, it, it is it is slick. It looks like they, you know, I don't know if, you know, I've been talked about before about The Verge went and looked at the R&D department uh, at Microsoft, where there are some really interesting slick things. Microsoft can do slick. They can do, um, you know, good design. Um, I think the, the Xbox redo is a really good design. Um, you know, really slimmed that down a bit. I, I haven't seen it next to like my old school one or anything like that. Um, but, uh, but I don't know. It was just really, uh, worth dragging, uh, half of the, uh, internet, uh, tech media out to LA for. No, absolutely no, not. No, I, I, don't I, I don't think so. it was quite worth that. Mm-hmm. It's, especially with how secretive they were with the whole, you know, hold back the location until the last minute kind of thing. Like, no, that's it. Definitely wasn't worth that. And, and, and really, this looks like a. And while the the smart cover keyboard thing, and there's a video we're seeing here from, um, I can't tell who it's from. From iPad Killer, it looks like. Um, it looks like he's trying to steal it. Uh, <laughs> it it looks like it's it's the same thing where I, you know, this problem's already been solved on iPads. They just made it part of the initial design right off the bat. Um, it, but it's still windows, you know, it's still going to have the inherent problems. I can't, I, I can't imagine, and maybe this just isn't the market for it. I can't imagine handing my dad's, you know, here, here's a, here's a tablet. You want a tablet? It's windows, but still it's not the windows he's used to. Or even if we go, you know, further, 
to, you know, hey, here's the Pro one. It is like the Windows you're used to and dropping down on the desktop. Um, what about on? We got a couple IT guys here. What do you guys think uh, this means for the the enterprise size side of things? I don't. You know, it's one of those things that it really depends. I think that they tried to do a, I guess, a cool thing where they had a, uh, you know, a press conference with you know not a lot of information, but not not a lot of stuff came out of it. You know, mm -hmm. what's my processors? What's my, you know, what, what's the information about it? Um, you know, there's, it's going to be tough. I think it's going to be tough for them as far as, you know, getting some traction because a lot of this depends on how Windows 8 is going to run on a tablet. Yeah. Uh, you know, that is, if it comes out of the box and stinks, well, you're comparing something that's coming out of the box that kind of stinks, which would be okay for version one. But you're comparing it to an iPad, and you're just going to lose every time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's, but yet it's it feels like it's going to ha have. Well, yeah, I, w I want to compare it to Android because I feel like the platform's there where where it doesn't feel like it is on on Android. Um, but it's going to be two to three times the price of an Android tablet at this point. Yeah. And that's where I, I think you're, they're going to kill it. Um, we talked about briefly. Uh, I think I talked about uh, Vizio on the show. No, no, I didn't, actually, because that's something I found late in the week. Uh, Vizio's putting out uh, an interesting line of, of kind of iMac-like and slick uh, computers, and they're capturing that, uh, you know, kind of $800 to $1,000 level, that upper market that's in between, because nobody's buying PCs that are more than, you know, say, five or $600, and if you're going up and up above that, you're just going to push all the way to probably a MacBook or a MacBook Air at that point at 1000 um, this feels like it's in that area, and I think there's a little bit of a, like, there was a lot of disinterest, if I felt, for the Vizio thing, although I'm really interested to see what they're going to do with that design. Um, do you think people, it, the price is going to be an issue at this point, compared to Android even, um, compared to compared to iPads? It, it just, uh, I, I think it's already just, just shot in a foot out the gate. Yeah, I, I don't think that, you know, the price point determines for the most part, who you're going to compete with. Uh, I don't think if you're, if I'm going to be looking at an $800 mm -hmm. tablet, you know, I, I don't think that, you know, I'm going to be comparing that to an iPad. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I, if I have that cash to spend and frankly, it's already kind of burned in, it's on third generation. Uh, you know, it just works. Yeah. You know, that, that's what attracts me to something. Uh, it has to work. Versus this is going to be starting over with the whole Metro interface. But yeah. I mean, the, your apps need to be built for that. It's not like you're going to be able to drop all the stuff that you had before. Um, it's interesting. And, 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 and the fact that they're building their own rather than leaving it up to the manufacturers is also kind of an interesting move. Yeah, I think that was really risky to potentially alienate some of their hardware partners. Uh, but sometimes that pays off as well. Uh, you know, especially if, you know, another hardware partner wanted to with uh you know come out with a tablet with similar hardware specs theirs potentially could be 75 dollars more because they'll have to pay for a windows license you know because they're going to pass that price along mm -hmm. uh, so that i you know again that uh, potentially you know a lot of this this could all be vaporware for all we know and never make a you know they only make five of them and that's it <laughs> this is the next courier yeah exactly plus i gotta buy a stylus well doesn't the stylus come with it Really? I don't know. Is that an add-on? It's got to be included. Too many questions. If I have to buy a stylus, I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> but if it's included, you'll be you'll be good on it, right? Uh, I might give it a shot. Um, well, it looks like, oh, here's a little bit more. The Verge actually has a couple more uh, spec things. They said it's going to come in 32 or 64-bit version or gigabyte versions. Uh, it'll be running on an NVIDIA Tegra processor um, for graphics. So, so there's a little bit of specs for you. 10.9 inch, 16 nine display um they're liking the way it's looking 1.5 pounds is what microsoft is quoting um I, it's slick i i don't know I, we gotta see we gotta see what the how the excitement for uh windows 8 kind of picks up here as we go throughout the year i guess so yeah it'll, it'll be interesting to also see what types of because with the with the pro version 
you have the ability to, you know, port any Windows 8 app that, mm-hmm. um, you know, you maybe make for, you know, standard desktops or whatever. Uh, with the RT version, you know, what kind of apps am I going to be able to get? I mean, people are going to have to take time to recompile things, uh, you know, to, to make it run on that hardware. Am I going to have the ability for iTunes on Windows RT? You know, kind of stuff like that. Exactly, exactly. Uh, moving on here, uh, I want to go to a story here that uh, was actually given to us on Google Plus uh, via Nero, Matt W. over there. Um, he's always good at commenting on, on a Google Plus page for uh, awesome cast. Let me see if I can bring it up here. Uh, but basically, now I lost it. Oh, there it is. Close will show you the number of Facebook likes. Uh, apparently, uh, this is this is through a through a company cnca and we'll get a little bit of video here going on but basically this store will have a facebook page that has all their items as people like it there are numbers on the hooks and the number of likes will show up on there so you can see what people have been liking in the store huh what do you think will that influence your uh you're buying. I mean, this is this is more of a high profile clothing store here uh, that they're talking about. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, CNA fashion like is what like, they're calling it. Do I look like the type of guy that would give it? Would care what people <laughs> like in a high end store? So there's a look at the numbers. The 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 impression. I may or may not even be wearing pants. I mean. That's not anything I'm interested in. Well, and then in. the idea we started talking about, uh, what if this gets applied to something like Walmart or Target? Maybe? That's going to be bad. You think that's that going to be gonna bad? Be very, right? very what do you think, bad. What do you think is going to have the most likes in the store that's going to direct you to it? NASCAR tees. NASCAR tees and wrestling t-shirts. Yep. Yep. Um, that already exists. It's called Amazon.com. <laughs> there you the go. Reviews. There you go. There you go. That's that's how I. I mean, that's how I shop. Okay. Well, what did you think of this product? Oh, every a thousand people thought it was good. I mean, obviously, with Facebook, you have the Facebook numbers, which really will help. Uh, I'm like uh, like AJ. Do not Facebook. So none of this is going to affect me. Okay. Okay. And. Uh, it- there we go. Uh, Rob looks like he's going to be joining here in a second. Um, no Chachi, uh, that was the other Microsoft story that we needed to bring up. Um, there was a document that was leaked this week. You there want to tell us about that? a document that? leaked what, this what, week. What happened with that? <laughs> the 720? So, so um, one of the largest video game companies in the world... Microsoft. ...somehow just lost, <laughs> and lost control of a 56-page... Um, like five year roadmap for their company, and it wasn't like details. It was basically just a, a plan of what they wanted to do with the the video game side of things as far as the next Xbox goes. And there was a lot of uh, a lot of pretty sweet stuff that they want to do. Um, they want to release. Uh, uh, AR glasses to uh, make everything seem like it's right there with you. And now, it, now the, the part that impressed me was had absolutely nothing to do with anything that they were planning on releasing. It was the fact that Microsoft sat down and listed everything they wanted to accomplish with their new system... And compared it not only to the other video game companies, but all the other video companies. Okay. Like Google and Apple. They made sure that all the features they wanted to accomplish in this new system weren't something that was already being done on any of their previous systems, any of the competitors' previous systems, or anything rumored to be done in their next systems. And and, and now this document is dated uh, 2010, right? Yeah, like I said, it's it's a... uh, three to five year plan Mm -hmm. um so that just shows you how far ahead they were looking when they sat down to plan all plan all this stuff Mm -hmm. and and it's not nothing new by far um because it i mean in the document they obviously didn't have any of nintendo's wii u stuff yeah um so i mean it was it was an interesting read 
I'll email it to you if you want to. <laughs> so it was early plans uh, for something like that. Rob De La Creta joins us on the Hi. Skype line. How you doing, Rob? I'm uh, doing all right. I uh, was in Boston for a few days and then uh, had to, today I was sending off one of my coworkers. So I'll, I'll admit that I'm a tequila flight and a margarita to the wind. Um, which is honestly why I'm a little late, but <laughs> no problem. No problem. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, man. Um, I guess, I, I don't know. You've been traveling. Did you catch, uh, we'll touch base with you. Did you catch any of the Microsoft surface announcement yesterday? I, um, you know, I feel like everybody's sort of grasping at the same straws. So all I did today was I watched the, the really impressive video for the Microsoft surface. Mm -hmm. Um, the dubstep one. What's that? The dubstep one? Yeah, the dubstep whoa. one. It's really with the mercury droplets and everything, which yeah. is really impressive. I mean, it's a sexy video, don't get me wrong. Um, but knowing absolutely nothing about the product and reading Twitter, this is what I know. So it's the Surface, which is now referring to the tablet instead of the really overpriced $10,000 table that nobody actually bought. Um, it runs Windows 8, just like the HP tablet does. It probably does 90% of all the things an iPad does, but does them slower. <laughs> um, it looks really nice and they didn't, they, they, they didn't give you a price point and the release date is sometime in the beginning of next year. Next year. I thought it was going to be released alongside, uh, uh, windows eight this year. It's 2013. Oh, well, that's, that's great. We'll wait on that. Yeah. Then kind of inside of that, I mean, versus what we see with, you know, Apple where, Hey, here's this thing. You can order it today or next week. Yeah, I mean, you know, plenty of people I mean, were saying on Twitter that's how you that, like, get excitement. Isn't this isn't this a very like non Apple thing to do? And you don't realize it until it's a thing that like Apple has become the status quo of every time they announce a cool new thing, even if it's not being released immediately, they're like, you know, if it's basically if it's not coming out immediately, it's probably free or dirt cheap. So like, yeah, uh, Mountain Lion comes out in the fall. And it'll cost you like what thirty bucks, just actually, like every other upgrade. Actually, whereas it's what's gonna, it's going to be July and it's going to be twenty bucks. July and twenty bucks. I'm a yeah. little off with my technical okay. things. You've been There's traveling. You've been on. traveling. You've been doing things, having a life. You know, Com computers. Yeah. Um, but in in total ridiculous contrast to that, Microsoft is stuck in this really awkward model that was totally cool ten years ago, which was here's a cool new thing. Here's very little information about its actual specs. Here's a very vague terminology about when it's going to come out, which means we can change that at any time, and we're not going to tell you how much it costs because, honestly, we don't have that good of a handle on our supply chain, and it's not going to sell that many of them anyway, so we're going to want you to charge you more than we think we need to charge you today. Hmm. If only the PS3 could have taken that route. Exactly, exactly. Um, Chilla, Chilla corrects. He says RT is is this year. Um, the, pro, the Pro is going to be in 2013. What's, From, what, what's, you're breaking up a little bit. Oh, the uh, the RT version, the uh, ARM processor version of it is, is going to be this year. And it looks like the Pro, the Intel version, is going to be 2013. Oh, okay. So Yeah, I was, I was reading on uh, PC World, the five questions related to the Surface. Mm -hmm. They said uh, 2013. That's cool, though. Hey, you know. Um, and uh, let's, let's circle back to where we were. Um, so the uh, Microsoft leak, um, Chachi, where were we with that? Is there anything else you wanted to share? Uh, it, it's blue. It's rumored to be Blu-ray. Which um, is kind of the logical next step. Yeah. There's really nothing else for storage. Right. Anybody could uh, really and go with right now. In a surprising move, move, and it's still really early, so this is definitely going to change. Yeah. <laughs> but the document said they're aiming for a $300 price point. Which I think you have to do. It, it It's not going to happen. No? Not no. with the Connect included or right. anything like uh, that? They're doing a new Connect, which has a better uh, recognition ability. Um, the system itself, the Blu-ray... Uh, the processors, it's going to have the always-on technology. And I, I, it's just not going to happen at a $300 price point. Mm -hmm. it, it's improbable. That's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to say it's impossible. It's improbable for it to happen at a $300 price point. I would love for it to happen at a $300 price point, but mm -hmm. it's not going to. 
Yeah, and it, it, it almost feels like it might have to, because I, I think I think with uh, well, then again, what's the Wii U going to do? Is Why? Wii U? Because Nintendo's doing it. Um, plus, they're com- plus they're competing with uh, stuff like the Roku box, Nintendo, like directly. Nintendo's not a. In- no, I'm sorry. Nintendo is not a competitor in this field any longer. Maybe this uh, maybe this price point is going to be the low end. Of what they're going to do, because there was uh, some stuff in there about them doing several different flavors of, and they already did that with the the 360. I mean, they started out. What was the starting point? Like four hundred dollars, and it went up from there yeah. when they launched. So, um, so I mean, that's kind of become the norm for them now. Not necessarily. It could be. It could it, be. It most likely, no, no, it will be, but it doesn't mean it. it looking will at be. Microsoft, I mean, they just released a tablet in two flavors, so yeah, you know. Um, so this one's going to have an ARM chip and only run downloadable games and this one's going to have the real chip and be able to actually buy games like you're used to right applying the uh, windows 8 strategy to there um all right what else we got here um so cbs is going to have a draw something tv show so it's a uh it's win lose or draw i guess (laughs) it'll come out with the surface tablet of course (laughs) (laughs) Sometime next year. I mean, it just... It, well, they, they obviously they bought the brand because everybody knows what Draw Something is now. Uh, but it's not like it's a really new concept as far as TV game shows, unless you're doing something interesting with it. But I don't know. I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Are we going to see more... Are we going to see an Angry Birds... Uh, well, we always have an Angry Birds theme park coming out in Asia somewhere. So And they're working on a cartoon. It's, it's kind of getting there. They've been working on a cartoon. I know they've, they've had a few shorts that have popped up on Nickelodeon. Right. So, and it's, I just found Angry Birds, like a whole wall of Angry Birds in the Hallmark. Well, they want to, uh, it, CBS is in talks with Major League Gaming to actually pick up uh, professional gaming events yeah. for television purposes. Um the, the talks that E3 went extremely well. Um, so it, it is quite possible that they're, they're heading towards a more uh, video game platform, which I think is awesome for CBS and awesome for video games and professional gaming. However, I don't see it succeeding all that well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, while... Uh, CBS isn't picking up a lot of the market as is. It's still going to alienate them from the rest because they're going to have basically professional gaming video game events on there. And the majority so, of the the people who get the channel aren't going to want to watch it. Yeah, that's not really uh, general interest, but maybe they're looking to create some general interest in something like that. I mean, hey, I, as you get as you get guys, you know, like our age, that are the Nintendo generation or skewing older, we're turning into that prime market. You right. know, it's not it doesn't have to appeal to the old folks at this point. Um, so, you know, eventually by the time we're in the retirement home, gaming is going to be still interest to us, maybe. Um, so so it's kind of growing. I mean, they're, they're figuring it's at that point. You know, I mean, I mean, you saw at New York Comic Con how much professional gaming was all over that thing, just as a uh, as a general geekery thing. And like, I felt I like there was more video games than 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 comics there. Not really. I I mean, I, I'll agree with you. There was a lot of video games there. But it was I the mean, most massive of booths. <laughs> well, they had the money. Yeah, exactly. I, I I'm sorry, comics don't have money anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, no one's buying them. But everybody's going to go see the movie, right? So, there's that. Um, I don't know. What do you What do you guys think of this? Uh, so, dr- draw something. Uh, God, is that going to be? It was, it was probably like a daytime thing, like right next to the Price is Right, right? They can't. No, they no? can't. <laughs> Why not? Um, that is going to be another Drew Carey production. No, they cannot put it right next to the Price is That'll Right. That'll be hosted by that guy that sings a lot. From whose line is it, anyways? No. <laughs> no. I was going to say his name. I can't remember. Wayne Brady. Wayne Brady. No. Wayne not, Brady. Not going to happen anymore. They, they cannot put any game show next to the person. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm sorry. Frank, if I was one in the chat is saying, uh, judging by uh, the amount of people that are still playing Draw Something With Me, the show is already dead. <laughs> and, that, and that was a huge drop off after the big thing. Like this thing was huge for three weeks. 
I don't care anymore. Apparently, a lot of people don't care anymore because I don't even have dropped. it installed. No, no, it, I still have it installed, but it's just like eh, it's there, and people are nudging me, and I, I'm like, eh, I don't want to. People you know? stopped drawing. I stopped drawing. I got tired of it. I basically ran out of creative ways to draw penises. That's what happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he ran out of peni, and that seems like the 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 general thing going into it. Uh, people start drawing wrestlers for random reasons during mine. Um, you know, it, it was it was fun. It was fun, but it was a it was a fluke thing. Somebody made money off of it, and good for them. Um, I feel like there's kind of a you know everybody's into casual gaming, but when you there's a total trade off that happens when you have a game like that where your turn and your ability to play the game is based on somebody else's boredom. So. Everybody gives the example of casual gaming as you're standing in line at a bank or something and you've got five seconds to yourself. You're like, oh, I'm just going to gonna play this little game, which is great if it's like Bobble mm-hmm. or something like that. But when it's you have to depend on somebody else and you like you open your phone, you're like, OK, say you're in the same situation. You're playing draw something and you're like, oh, well, nobody else has returned their turn. And then you, you just look for something else to do. The moment that you look for something else to do means the next time that you stand in line in a bank, you're probably just going to go straight to that other thing because you're looking for immediate gratification for your 30 seconds of time to waste. Uh, unfortunately, the, the idea of casual gaming means you're going to casually move on to the next thing. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's like, it, 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 it's, you know, it, it, it's the, I want to say, the, you know, your, your OCD on it, but it's, it's it, that's what it is. It's like, okay, what's the thing for me to tinker with now? You know, and, and punch the monkey, you know, do this, uh, play with my friends. It, it has to come easy because people aren't looking for what you're offering. Certainly. Uh, or, and there's there's like, you know, when in a game like that, when does it become work? It's the same thing with words with friends where, like, if you're not good at Scrabble, <laughs> words with friends can get really exhausting. It can get old really quick. It can get old super fast when you're like, yeah. oh, well, I'm going to play this word for 26 points. Such and such has played on a monopia for 170 points and you're like that's it i'm done i'm out yeah, there's no yeah. point for me to go on you're like i'm down by 300 points should i even keep going uh, right yeah. so then you're playing draw something and your words are you know i can't even think of like like pinball machine an emotion and abraham lincoln and you're like i don't know what to do yeah. Like none of these things are And it just gets pushed to the drawing. bottom of your list. And, and maybe you'll get back to it. And then that person on the other end suffers and doesn't get your game. Right. And so it's basically when an app turns into a thing that you eventually open and decide not to use anymore, your chances of using it again are exponentially lower. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. That, that's, a, that's a good case of... <laughs> yeah, how about that? <laughs> wow. Darn it, Rob. You're smart. <laughs> Words so, to I, live I could by. just ruin the dreams of so many iOS game developers. You have no idea. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, it is such a flash in the pan thing, just by by how it is, and not just iOS. You know, it's Facebook too. Uh, but both of these things, you know, words with friends draw something or our Facebook thing. It, it, the casual gaming is huge there. Um, Zynga pretty much survives on this whole concept. Yeah, and it's it's. I mean, it's a totally psychological thing, and it's tuned to different people. Like there are people who their bread and butter is literally Farmville. Like, the gratification you get out of Farmville is very particular, just like the gratification you get out of an MMORPG is very particular, Mm -hmm. which is why the same people whose bread and butter is, like, Counter-Strike 1.6 are not typically the same people who are currently salivating over Diablo 3. Yeah. Like, it's two different things. Like, me personally, I'm all about first-person shooters and things like, like Doom, I can play the heck out of Doom because it's just non-stop gratification over and over and over again, and I don't have to think too much, and I can I can stop pretty much whenever I want to. Or games like uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted it was the best thing ever because I'd get stuck in a police chase for three hours, but it was all adrenaline pumping. I'm not the kind of guy who's going to play draw something for months on end because I'm going to get a kick out of her a minute and then be like, eh, you know what, I can. I'm going to play this like zombie shooter game and get my kicks for five seconds. And then I'm going to go back to work. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we'll see how the draw something show goes. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be plenty other bad decisions as, 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 uh, all these, all these mobile games, uh, become the, the big well, thing. Also look at it this way. The draw something game, uh, game show is going to fail because they won't let you draw penises on, on, 
daytime or primetime television. And let's be honest, that's the reason we all play. Right. Mm-hmm. Actually, that was my introduction, was uh, Mikey tweeting out that, you know, hey guys, play Draw Something with me on this. Warning, I will be drawing penises. It's like, yeah, and, okay, and at what point does this take, you know, take the ugly turn that is when everybody realizes that Draw Something without penises is literally every board game or Pictionary game or mm-hmm. stupid family game you've ever played. And we're going to make a TV show for every single one of them? Like, it's literally the same thing. When you take away the ability to make stupid jokes with your friends or get these random words and have these, like, it's all about the social interaction between you and a friend or you and a stranger. Um, But when you put it on a game show, it creates this whole different weird environment in which you will actually try to draw Abraham Lincoln even though you're only capable of drawing a stick figure with a hat. There's a lot of stick figures in my games, I'm telling you. Which is just, it's not compelling content. Mm Mm-hmm. Wolf, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but some of us can't draw people. <laughs> That's why you draw a penis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I can draw a penis, but I can't draw Abraham Lincoln's face. Oh, it's a certain drawing penis. It's a certain <laughs> part of the brain. Um... Wow. Uh, <laughs> it's the penile cortex. That's the where that comes from. The penile cortex. There's a, there's a show title. Uh, Chachi, save us from the penis talk. Um, tell me about this ring thing that's going to be on Kickstarter. It's called the Ringbow. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a real thing. I, I'm sorry. Um, the Ringbow is a device that they're developing for mobile gaming control. Okay. Can I just take an adult moment and point out <laughs> that going from penile cortex to Ringbow <laughs> is not the healthiest conversation? You're right. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm still the first laughing. place that ring is gonna go, I it, know where. No, it, <laughs> listen. I bet for, you that'll get like the Walmart. From the picture of the ring bow alone, if this can fit on your penis, then it's no wonder why you bought this. Because you're not doing much of anything else. Anyhow, uh, back on track. Uh, the ring bow is a uh, Bluetooth device that. Uh, you connect to your phone. <laughs> I know where you. I know where you're going with your mind there. <laughs> so I connect it to my phone after I put it on my penis. Go on. <laughs> and basically, an it, it, it becomes the second touch, mm-hmm. essentially. Um, it's like wearing a a button. Uh, it's like touching your screen uh, through this button. Which, uh, the way they were showing it, it would be great for first-person shooter, like mobile first-person shooters, because the trigger would be on your, your finger, which would be better. Um, but that was about the only true use of this that I ever saw, that I saw in the, uh, the pictures and the video. It's really, I, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's, it's a weird device because it, it opens up the whole... Um, do we need controllers for our phones, or is that taking it too far? Well, a, a phone tablet device, it looks like more what they're trying to do here. Well, this is interesting. There's a tank thing where you each control a tank and shoot at each other. I don't know. I, it's an interesting concept, but, you know, selling it could be a little bit more to it. Well, see, my whole thing is, if you're going to release a... A controller for the phone, uh-huh. it needs to be a joystick. It doesn't need to- <laughs> You can see where they still were. Yeah. Uh, it needs to be a joystick or a, a, a touchpad, like a directional pad of some sort, not a button. Mm-hmm. Perhaps I, like a rod of some kind that you could hold in your hand. Will you shut up? <laughs> <sighs> <clears throat> Go ahead. <laughs> That's all I got. That's all you got. Yeah. I don't know what you guys think of this uh, this interface here, guys. <laughs> uh, it's been working for centuries. It's not going to stop now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, uh, Brian. Wow. All I can say is, does that lead into that device ever? Um, no. You know what? I don't know. They got to give it a try. If it takes off, that's great. If not, I mean, it's just a novelty. Yeah, it, it does seem like more novelty than anything else. Because now you get, then you got to get these games that support it. And well, uh, I mean, the uh, the Kickstarter 
at, at a certain level comes with a a disc or something comes with access to uh, games that are developed for it, just in case it doesn't take off. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can at least use it with stuff that they've developed. Yeah, and it just it just feels like it feels like like all that crazy stuff that came out for the PC over the last fifteen years, where like when we had stereoscopic gr- glasses like in the late nineties, but they only worked with a certain subset of games, like a special version of I don't know Descent or something. Um, and then you had these other like head mouse motion controller things again, a select specific number. Uh, of things supported it. It feels like that's the way we're going with this sort of thing for the iPad or whatever. Is this specifically? Oh, it says it for. It can be used for Android or iOS, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I mean, it feels like that's where we're at with that. It's now we're going to get these kind of gimmicky concept things, and you're not going to get anything well, like that taken off until you have something like a Connect well, uh, that, says- that actually that that actually kind of gets it right in on the right platform and with the right people behind it. Well, they uh, they have a goal of a hundred thousand um, dollars, three hundred and twenty five backers so far, with thirty two days ago. Yeah, there's a so um, I mean they're they're they got a nice chunk into it. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they do. Yeah. So and if if this doesn't work out, there's an entire industry of people who would really love to get their hands on it. Yeah, exactly. If not for the gaming thing, there's somebody that wants to. I, and I feel like this is one of those things because I mean they got. They got IGN, they got Mashable, they got Scoble on here, uh, uh, you know, talking about it, saying definitely worth it. I want one. I uh, gap between touch control and accuracy while gaming. Um, you, you have to use it to figure it out. And, uh, you know, other than kind of passing it on to everybody else, I don't know if they're going to get that many people behind it. No. So at that at that rate. So. Riz uh, made the Lord of the Rings joke. <laughs> so when we covered did. that. We can move on now. All right, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, who's who's on a buying spree this week? Oh, it looks like it's Facebook, and they just acquired Face.com just because that makes sense. I think. In tech. It's about time. Wait, I mean, someone right? Someone didn't already own Face.com. No, oh, no, I'm no, sure no. Somebody owned it. It was just up for auction. Well. Face.com was a company, and they bought the company. Yeah. It, and yeah. Face.com actually does facial recognition. Uh, which apparently uh, mobile and in, uh, in desktop. Um, and we know Facebook's been doing facial recognition for a bit, but I guess the mobile isn't very good, which has been pretty much the story of Facebook lately. Um, it's actually a Israeli startup. Um, wait, wait, hold on. They have computers in Israel? Th- yes, they have computers in Israel. I was unaware. I'm I'm, sh- I'm sure they do, and, pa- and they're doing startups. Good, good. You should ask the computers in Iran if the Israelis Israelis have uh, computers. <laughs> exactly. S- exactly. Stuck that come to mind. Stuck snatch. <laughs> um. But yeah, it, it's uh, the, the, this is their first one, I think, since Instagram. Um. They're, they were in talks uh, previously for acquiring Face.com for tens of millions of dollars, uh, and they, they haven't disclosed exactly how much. Uh, apparently, facial recognition, not worth the billion dollars that a fun little picture-taking app is. Just to be fair here, um, the only... There's actually been one, two, three, four acquisitions since there Instagram... Have. Not including Face.com. Okay, okay. Yeah. I have this a- one is just getting a lot of uh, media just because it's Face.com, and they can. it's a good tagline for a news article that is, Facebook acquires Facebook, <laughs> Face.com. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So, um, I, I don't know, face recognition, so hopefully that makes it a little better for them. Are we scared about face recognition in uh, Facebook? Well, they already have it, and they suck at it. I've, They're still going to suck at it. So I've been using it as kind of a scare tactic to tell people not to put pictures of their dog or babies as their uh, Facebook picture. Dear God, if only that could work. As a, I don't know. It's just like, you know, you know, if you put your dog up there uh, and you start using facial recognition, that can just go weird. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I'm glad that you like your pets mm-hmm. and your kids, but those things are not you. Yeah. Which makes the Internet hard. Exactly, exactly. Don't make the Internet hard. Use your own picture. I'm sure there's a lot of people from high school I would recognize uh or or something but you know i am sorry you you got married changed your last name and i can't tell you by your children right yeah 
So if you really wanted to get kind of caught up with me, it's not happening. I'm not if it, if it doesn't work on your driver's license, it's not going to work on the internet. <laughs> that is good. I'm going to use that. I am going to use that. <laughs> it doesn't work on your driver's license. <laughs> Excuse me, officer. Here's my ID. It's a picture of my 10-year-old son. Yeah? <laughs> yes, you tell? I, yeah, I gotta, gotta Same eyes? Like sir? Sir? <laughs> what is that citation you're writing? Okay. Uh, um, sir, get out of the car and keep your kid out of it. <laughs> Exactly. Um, I had one more thing. This was a relaunch uh, that caught my attention late last week. Um, and actually, maybe I'll cycle back to this one uh, now that Rob's here. Um, TwitFid relaunches as Telly, a Pinterest for video, because that's what we needed. That is too many names in a title. Is it? <laughs> TwitFid relaunches as Telly, a Pinterest for video. Yes, which means, I mean, it's kind of an interesting, uh, I'll see if I can bring it up. I, I, I mean, I... I Apparently, I'm already signed into it since I've used TwitFit at some point, I guess. And I'm amazed at how many people I know are in it, too. But I Well, I feel like Twit wasn't TwitFit for a while just the bit.ly for videos uploaded through certain Twitter applications well, in it, iOS? Yeah, it was like, yeah. well, it was like the Twit pick for... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's also got defaulted somewhere. You automatically yeah. got linked into it because you use this application. Um, it's an interesting look to it it has this kind of timeline thing i mean it reminds me a lot of path actually uh the way this thing looks yeah it's um, got the little circular icons too so yeah huh. and what do i do with it next um hmm. here's my prediction it's it's not gonna last no no <laughs> So obviously, call this, call this ultimate godly wisdom, but I don't. I don't think it's going to last. So apparently, Twitvid wasn't doing good enough. They needed to pivot uh, some kind of focus, and now I'm going to look at it and be like, "And yeah, right. so, is, so you changed your name from Twitvid to Telly, Telly, Telly. Okay, just checking. L L Y sounds com. really dumb. Yeah. So that was interesting, um, Rob. I and I think I mentioned this before you came on. I, it, it, tell me if I'm crazy for being so interested in it in this, but have you have you looked at the new Vizio lap or uh, line of computers they're putting out? The Vizio computers? No, I have not. Please, Michael, educate me. I will. I'm going to try to bring up the post here. I think it was the Verge have it had it. Uh, yeah, they're releasing a new line of kind of iMac uh, computers and and uh, kind of slick, not MacBook Air, but kind of just slick. Uh, yeah, I'm looking laptops. at, I see a very tiny picture of it on, on the internet, and uh, if I if I didn't have my glasses on, I would assume I was looking at a line of Apple computers. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and I mentioned earlier, they're kind of like filling in that gap between what you usually get, uh, you know, off the shelf really cheap at Best Buy, uh, and, uh, and, you know, what you would presume you would pay for, for an Apple computer. Um, I read an article on Verge, so did you know there's only, like, did you know Vizio was an American company to begin with? Uh -huh. First yeah. of all, it, 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 this has been amazing because it's a, they've taken over, you know, a lot of the TV uh, side of things. Here's a little bit of video for you guys on uh, the video side of things. Uh, but, yeah, they're they're not doing bloatware. They're, they're, they're tuning windows to their... Um, to their hardware um and they're not so they're basically trying to position themselves as the the uh laptop manufacturer for windows that like the 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 windows alternative to apple laptops yeah yeah i think yeah. i think and, and i think they're getting really close with it and i love that this interview is apparently taking place in a best buy is this or no no this is this is apparently their headquarters here uh, which I think is in Irvine, California. Um, which they give yeah, it is, it is Irvine, California. They're actually, they're a pretty small company. I mean, their revenue is they only $2.9 billion a year. Um, but these things, I, I, I think they really, when these things start showing up on, up on shelves and they're cheaper than, uh, uh, you know, an iMac and a MacBook Air right off the bat. Um, Are there prices on these things yet? Uh, they said they're looking for like that kind of, you know, upper sub hundred, sub thousand dollar uh, market so far. They're going to have HDMI ins, so you can plug like an Xbox into it. The displays are going to be really nice because they're already using, you know, they're already doing that with, um, you know, with their television sets. I have a Vizio television set of forty two inch upstairs. I'm really happy with it. Um, so, so there's going to be a lot of focus on that. They're not even putting Windows and Intel stickers on these things. 
Yeah, I mean, they look super clean. My biggest, my biggest concern would be, is this actually bead blasted aluminum or is it plastic? Because the moment it's like, I, you know, hate to sound like a snob, but I, at this point I'm used to Apple devices, which are physically durable. Come at me, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, but if your stuff is made out of plastic, I'm not interested in it. Exactly, exactly. The, some of the philosophy stuff they said in the article was interesting. That most most uh, manufacturers seem to start with a motherboard and wrap bad plastic around it. And uh-huh. they're actually, actually, if you're looking at this picture here, this isn't an iMac kind of model. It's more of that little tower nubbin thing over there. That's the freaking computer. Yeah, which is crazy. I mean, there's a little bit in the base. You can see where the ports are in the bottom there. Yeah. And then there's that thing. But also, that like if that thing is a chrome piece of plastic... Oh, I'll be so angry. <laughs> <laughs> but it still looks nicer. Yeah, it does. Like, it I've does hated going to nicer. Best I mean, Buy. It's, it's basically the, um, the, the remember the, the Vio when the Sony Vio was the nicest laptop you could buy? Exactly. And those are all made out of aluminum and everything, but it was total crap because Sony shouldn't make computers or electronic devices, if you want to be honest. But... Another big thing they're pushing was uh, the track pads. They, they're, they're claiming they have way better track pads than anybody else on a PC. I know every time I pick up a PC laptop with a track pad, yeah. I just get angry. Um, they redesigned the keyboard. Uh, you know, they have a very kind of butted together uh, design to it. You know, it looks actually kind of like what they're doing with that uh, Surface keyboard that they just mm. advertised. Um, so it, it's really interesting. I want to keep an eye out on this. Um, what, is the, um, what is the base thing that I keep seeing paired with this business? The base, the thing? little like chromey little cube thing. Do you see this thing? Wait, are you, are you talking about the um, the little the little nub thing over here, or yeah, in that picture you have up right now, all the way to the left? I guess. Yeah, I no, I think right. I think that's the computer. It, that is the computer. Yeah, I oh, believe so. So it's I, like a G four cube then. Yeah, I guess so. Huh. Or something, well, or it's a breakout box with the uh, yeah, because there's the power thing there. It's, it's, uh, they got a bunch of ports in the base, so I guess it pairs up. I don't know. That's weird. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure what that is now. Yeah, I mean, because I was under the impression like we were just about like the the iMac sort of thing. Because if you can't realistically, unless this is a monster of a machine, in which case, honestly, I would rather the iMac approach in which you make the monitor you know a half inch thicker, and that's where you put all your computer components. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't want a little cubey thing unless it's a subwoofer. That'd be easy to hide, though, in comparison. I sound like such an anal <laughs> something right now. <laughs> On that note, you sound uh, pretty much normal. It's time for us to wrap up here, guys. Uh, Brian, thank you very much for joining us, sir. Anything you want to plug out there? What do you got going on? Not nothing really to plug. Just want to tell people: change your passwords, back up your computers, and keep them up to date. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's please, good advice. And please get your, back get them up. A one password or a Drobo or something. Get on the right track. One, yeah, and I'm I'm, I'm looking to go on a one password kind of system myself. I'm I'm endeavoring to make that the next thing I improve on. Here. Last pass. And don't be like that guy that's suing Apple because apparently he put all of his ch- children's young pictures on a time machine. It failed, and he's suing Apple. Yeah, oh. sure. That'll hold up in court. Yes, I just, guarantee it. Just putting it on. A, well, apparently there's some kind of defect recall, whatever, and he's claiming it was defective. But yeah, still, the defects in his head. Yeah, it's still you don't know how to back up. The backup means there's. Okay, we're not getting into that. They'll just yeah. take us another way. Rob De La Creas, Rob J D L C dot com. Also yep. on Twitter. Yep. Doing things. Watches. Doing things. Many travels. Wonderful pictures. Tremendous beers. You make me sound like a stand-up person. You know that, Mike? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, I am, uh, let's see, I'm not actually traveling again until the end of July. I'm going to sunny San Diego. Ooh. Yeah, sunny San Diego. Building plenty of cool stuff in the interim. Um, Making a lot of uh, offensive jokes on the internet. Oh, oh, uh, speaking of offensive jokes, uh, Miss Bossy Pants tweeted us to remind us that uh, Israel is not located in Nebraska. Oh, I was on. I was mistaken. I thought it was the capital of Nebraska. Oh, oh dear, that's confusing. I'm gonna have to readdress some envelopes. <laughs> Man, you need to look at a map. <laughs> Damn, Alaska's part of Ohio, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, just checking. It's that part in the middle where it's all flat and stuff. 
Oh, oh, you mean Idaho? Yes. Idaho, Ohio? Yes. Thank uh, you. Right. Oh, man. Awesome. <laughs> uh, and Chachi of insertcointobegin.com with Let's Play. Incorrectly giving Rob the, uh, the landscape of America since last night. <laughs> you, you really dug for that one. You I did. really Correct, dug for that one. Incorrectly give me a landscape anytime you want. Sweet. What you got coming up on Let's Play for people to check out? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody has uh, no, read his no, we're gonna talk. Uh, we're gonna cover the normal format. We got favorite fighting games, favorite boss fight, and what we're playing. It's a lot of reminiscing on that on that show. Yeah, normally it seems to be. Well, right. I mean, it, it's a different format. It's not your regularly scheduled uh, video game podcast. Okay. And, of course, I got my stuff over at Sorgatron.com, SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, go check us out. Check out this show's past shows, whatever, at AwesomeCast.com. Follow us at AwesomeCast on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on Google+. Plus. You can join us in the Hangout like Frank has tonight. Hi, Frank. I'm sure I'll, I'll fit... Yeah, there he gives a thumbs up. Um, and oh, oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, oh, oh, hey, 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 hey. I'm going to take advantage of the internets for a second. Uh-oh. If you sort of kind of know what I do, probably from this show, if not from talking to me in person, and you're interested in doing the things that I do, you should talk to me because there's an opportunity there. There you go. There you go. Tweet them. At Tweet Rob, me. At RobJDLC. Yes, please. You can go make cool things. Get, and travel the world. I don't know. Is that is that part of that position? I don't know. Yeah, it's part of that. I mean, it, is, it could be. It could be. You could work your way to it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. All right. Go check that out. Thanks a lot. Um, everybody, you can be here live every Tuesday with us at 7 p.m. Eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, you can also drop us a line at contact at awesomecast.com. Uh, and I already covered the other stuff before. Thanks to our awesome chat room, our awesome hangout. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Systems on, turbines to speed, and off we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Awesome Cast 106. Sick? I want to start that over. How about that, guys? I think so. Okay. 106! 10 dick! 10 dick! Cock nuggets! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't help it. Is there no Rob tonight? Uh, he's going to be 10 minutes late. Weren't you paying attention? No. Jeez. We have Frankie and Cereal or something in the Hangout as well. All right, sorry, go ahead, buddy. <laughs> we'll probably bring him in here a little bit. So as I remember which knob that is. Brian, which knob are you? Say something. I'm this knob. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay, now I know. You got it on the first try. Now, Congratulations. Now I know. Now I know. Okay. <laughs>